What's going on guys? I'm Twitch, the Shield Bearer of Faith with Save One More Life as our training organization. If you're interested in that, go to saveonemore.life, not .com. It's saveonemore.life if you're interested in training. I got contacted by an old friend of mine. I haven't talked to him in a while up until the last month. And he was mentioning his, I think it's HSA, the health savings account that the government has for him. And it's about to run out. And he was asking me what I thought about a specific Amazon trauma kit. So he sent me a link and asked me my thoughts. Now, this was a Rhino Rescue trauma kit. And I do have some exposure to some of their items. I have used the Polymer Rhino Rescue tourniquets in training before. They're not terrible, but they're also not great. And they're not really what I would want to bet my life on if I had other options. There's a key takeaway there. If you have other options, Choose the best option. If you do not have other options, then something is better than nothing. So I talked to him a little bit back and forth in text, and I think there was a couple fundamental points that I would like to share with you that are so pivotal. One, he was going to use this health savings account for a really good purpose. He was going to get a trauma kit. He was going to get the trauma kit for his wife, though. Now, that is a point that I have learned with my own spouse that I need to involve their opinion on if I'm going to buy them this thing that they do not inherently have an interest in. So one of the things I advised him on was, no matter what I tell you, I think, or no matter what recommendation I make, go and make sure that your wife is getting to choose because it just doesn't have the same value. Let's say that you go buy a gun for your wife instead of giving her the information about the guns, but then letting her choose her own. It gives a little bit more involvement and I think a little more investment from the spouse so I recommend doing that ask them what would they like to have if they generally do not know that's when giving them more information may help this thing does this this thing does this finally I eventually got to the next piece where I asked him to make sure whatever they buy that they have knowledge on how to use it and again that's part of what I do with my life right I train people across the world in how to delay death and hopefully save lives with materials like what he's wanting to buy. And so in that, I've gotten exposure and experience with a magnitude of these materials and they're not all created equal, but it really doesn't matter what high speed item you have if you do not know how to use it. So I advise to make sure whatever you buy is within the range of your knowledge. An example of that would be a splint. So many people will buy a large trauma kit, maybe even something for a vehicle that will have things like splints inside, meant to stabilize a broken bone so you can get them to a hospital, higher level of care, and not cause more damage. If you don't know what to do with a splint, it may or may not benefit you to have it, and you may just be wasting money. Now with that, there's another train of thought too where, okay, you could have it, and maybe someone who shows up on scene will know how to use it. Maybe, maybe, but you need to make sure you at least think about that before you waste your money, because this stuff adds up quick. When you start talking about a splint that might be 15 more dollars, and then this package of random um, surgical tools that you have no idea how to use, and that's 30 more dollars, and you start adding that up, you could have bought a whole nother trauma kit of things you do know how to use. So be careful over buying. Then I finally got to uh, the next piece where I gave him my counter recommendation. Okay. Now he gave me what the price point he was looking at was. And so I went in and searched for a counter offer almost. I was not making anything on this. It was on a website that I have no affiliation to. Um, it was on North American Rescue's website directly. But the price point he was talking about was something that was around $70. And so I went and found him a bleeding control bag, essentially just a plastic bag with basic bleeding control components. But one of the most important things that I noted for him was it came with a real cat gen seven tourniquet. So if you're going to buy one of these trauma kits, know that a significant portion of its total cost is in the tourniquet. And if it's not a real cat or real soft tourniquet, they skimped, in my opinion. 
I know that Rhino Rescue is trying to sell their product and they're doing it for less money, but when you do that, in some cases, not all, but in some cases you get a lesser product. And in Rhino Rescue case, you do. You get a Chinese manufactured tourniquet and you get a less effective, less reliable, flimsier tourniquet. So everything's a trade-off. And I submitted that to him. And we talked a little more, but it ultimately came down to make sure it works for you. In this case, make sure it works for your wife. Get her opinion on it. Make sure that you have a way to actually carry these items. Where you plan to carry it matters greatly. Is it going in your pocket or in your car? You can fit a lot more in your car, right? So the size of the container that the items are in does not matter as much. And make sure that it's within the range of your actual skill level or at least within a reasonable application in your life. Back to the surgical tools idea. If you're gonna put surgical tools in a vehicle trauma kit in the United States, I think you've wasted space and money because on a car wreck, you're not going to use it. It's just the way it is. You'd be much more likely to use a pair of shears than you would an entire surgical kit in that environment. Now, if you're gonna be a combat medic on the front line in Israel, you probably ought to have a surgical kit because you might be needing that in some random event you're gonna encounter. Give more thought to it. Don't overbuy. Part of what I'm trying to do with Save One More Dot Life is not only train people on how to use the basic materials to delay death, but it's also hopefully trying to teach people how to save money where they can. That is a prime piece of what I talk about and what I demonstrate with in class and what the students get to experience in class. Go check us out. We have class dates currently posted. More are coming. Save One More Dot Life. We'll see you later.